Welcome to Mikunst Hardware. A few days ago AMD has officially released their AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. Luckily for me I was able to grab this Ryzen 5 5600X CPU. I had to wait in a store line for about one hour to be able to grab this CPU. This was the only single CPU available in the store. Luckily for me though, as I said, I was able to grab a Ryzen 5 5600X. This means today I am able to do some comparison with a very popular Xeon E5 2678V3. To make this comparison even more interesting, I have checked for different alternatives from Intel for this price range. On AliExpress you can find Core i9-10900 engineering sample for around 280 euros. In particular, I am going to test QTP1. It's a 10-core CPU, seems to be very interesting alternative to Ryzen 5 5600X. So in this video we're gonna see how a modern Ryzen 5 with the 6 cores is gonna compare to a slightly aged Core i9-10900 with the 10 threads, 20 cores and almost identical CPU clock frequency. Additionally to this comparison I am adding Core i5-10500 QSRK engineering sample. By the specification, this CPU is more similar to Core i5-10400, but Chinese and AliExpress are calling the CPU 10500 engineering sample, that's why I'm going to call the CPU 10500 just to avoid confusions. After my Xeon E5-1660 V3 overclocking video, many people asked me to do comparison between overclocked E5-1660 and Xeon E5-2678 V3. That's why in this video I also add overclocked E5 1660V3 to 4.2 GHz. Now let's quickly go through each CPU and take a look at its technical specification, starting with Ryzen 5 5600X. This is the latest CPU for the AM4 platform, 6 cores, 12 threads, CPU frequency 3.7 to 4.6 GHz. I have tested the CPU with the DDR4-3400 CL14. My memory sticks are also working as DDR4-3600 CL16, but this configuration produces slightly worse results compared to DDR4-3400 CL14. If you're interested, I will be making a dedicated video comparing different memory modules with Ryzen 5 5600X. To make my DDR4-3200 G-Skill modules work as DDR4-3400 CL14, I had to increase the memory voltage to 138 volts. This is absolutely safe voltage, the stock voltage for the memory is 1.2 volts, XMP voltage is 1.35 volts. CPU voltage I have left on auto, but I have also tested under volting Ryzen 5 5600X. The CPU was absolutely stable with minus 70 mV offset, but unfortunately this hurts to baboos frequencies and overall results were slightly worse, even though the CPU runs cooler and consumes less electricity. The next CPU in this comparison is Core i9-10900 QTP1 engineering sample. This CPU has 10 cores, 20 threads, and the frequency is between 4.1 and 4.6 GHz. This CPU is fully locked, it's not possible to overclock it using CPU clock multiplier, it's not possible to overclock memory, and it's not possible to overclock the CPU using VCLK. Using my MSI motherboard, if I try to overclock the CPU using VCLK, Turbo Boost stops working. BCLK 101-102 works, but in this case CPU works at 4.1 base frequency and does not turbo to 4.6 GHz. Thanks to my colleagues from Mir Computers in Italy, I know that this CPU also has some other issues. The Gigabyte motherboards are not properly functioning with this Core i9 engineering sample, and Core i9 engineering sample does not turbo boost. On the other hand, Asus motherboards were able to overclock this engineering sample using VCLK without disabling turbo boost. The maximum RAM speed supported by the QTB1 engineering sample is DDR4-2933. With my memory sticks, I was able to tidy memory timers to CL13. My Italian colleagues are usually undervolting these CPUs by 100 mV. In my case, my particular sample was not fully stable with minus 100 mV offset. Minus 90 mV is working ok. All my tests were conducted with this undervolting. The next CPU is Core i5-10500 QSRK engineering sample. As I mentioned, this CPU is more similar to Core i5-10400, but on AliExpress they are called Core i5-10500, that's why I will be calling it Core i5-10500 to avoid confusion. 
This CPU has 6 cores, 12 threads, and CPU clock frequency is between 3.7 and 4.2 GHz. The same as its big brother Core i9, this CPU is fully locked. It's not possible to overclock CPU, not possible to overclock memory, and it does not matter which motherboard you use. The maximum RAM speed is DDR4 2666, this you can chip out by buying cheap second-hand DDR4 memory. For this test I was able to tie in memory timings to DDR4 2666CL11. Unfortunately though I have forgot to adjust the last memory timings value and the memory timings were CL 111134. I know for sure that my memory is able to work at CL 11111128. It could be that this little mistake has impacted the Core i5 results by about 1% or even less, but I do not have time and possibilities to do the testing all over again at this moment. My particular Core i5 engineering sample is also fully stable if I apply negative 90 mV offset to the CPU voltage. The next CPU in line is the famous and very popular Xeon E5 2678V3. 12 cores, 24 threads, maximum turbo boost frequency 3.3 GHz, with the turbo boost unlock applied, all CPU cores are working at this exact frequency. Maximum memory speed is DDR4-2133, and because Quanon GX99TF motherboard does not support a different memory voltage, I was limited to the stock 1.2V for my memory modules, and with such voltage, the lowest memory timing I was able to achieve is CL11. For the Turbo Boost Unlock I have applied minus 80 mV for the CPU voltage and minus 50 mV for the integrated memory controller voltage. The last tested CPU is Xeon E5 1660V3. It's a rather unique Xeon CPU which has unlocked multiplier, it means you can overclock it using CPU clock multiplier. E5 1660V3 has 8 cores, 16 threads, and it's working stable at 4.2 GHz on 100X99TF motherboard. It is also possible to slightly overclock memory with this CPU. On Quan x 99TF motherboard I have achieved DR4-2400 CL12. Memory voltage is also limited to the stock 1.2V. To make my Xeon 5 v 3 work stable at 4.2GHz CPU clock frequency, I had to increase CPU voltage by 230mV. Integrated memory controller was overclocked to 3.4GHz, memory controller voltage was 1.18V. All possible TDP and CPU current restrictions were lifted off, and CPU was allowed to consume as much electricity as it wishes. Now let's take a look at the rest of the hardware which I have used for this video. Graphics card NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. I do not have a possibility to buy RTX 3080 because it's very expensive and also because it's out of stock everywhere. Also, most of my subscribers would like to see RX 6800X instead of RTX 3080, thus I plan to grab myself RX 6800X if I will be able to do that. All 5 CPUs were tested with exactly the same memory modules, which are 4 sticks 8GB each, G-Skill DDR4-3200 CL14. LG1200 CPUs were tested with MSI Z490 A Pro, LJ2011 version 3 CPUs were tested with Huanan GX99TF, and Ryzen 5 5600X was tested with Gigabyte B550M DS3H motherboard. For the system and gaming drive, I have used Crucial P1 1TB SSD. It's important to mention that all platforms were tested with fresh Windows installation, the systems were not bloated with redundant drivers. It is very important for AM4 platform to have fresh installation because it's well-known fact that if you install your system using Intel platform and then move the system to an AMD platform, you will have 3-7% penalty hit just because Windows is bloated with some kind of Intel drivers. All of these configurations were powered up by EVGA Supernova 750P2, and all of the CPUs were chilled by Noctua MHD15 CPU cooler. A few important notes before I jump into the results. First of all, I have figured out that MSI Afterburner and HW Info are impacting gaming results quite a lot. In some games, especially with the low core count CPUs such as Ryzen 5 and Core i5, there might be some extra stutters and 1% load drops when MSI Afterburner and HW Info started. Removing this application increases overall gaming performance, especially for the 1% loads. This especially impacts Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Battlefield 5 results, 
but I did not figure out any better way to test performance, that's why I had to use MSI Afterburner. Even though I have used Noctua and HD15 to cool all 5 CPUs, I don't think it's appropriate to compare temperatures between these CPUs, because each motherboard has its own CPU fan profile, and the fans were spinning with a different speed on different motherboards, which obviously impacts CPU temperature. I also don't have small Noctua AM4 brackets, that's why I had to install the cooler in a suboptimal position on my Gigabyte B450 motherboard. Ryzen 5 5600X has just launched, and Ada64 HW Info and HW Monitor do not display CPU power consumption. That's why for power consumption test I have used an external wattmeter, which registers entire system power consumption and not just the CPU. Xeon E5 2678 and E5 1660v3 produce slightly better results with BIOS from iEngineer, but my Huanan GX99 TF motherboard has a defective BIOS chip, which is not compatible with the BIOS from BIOS iEngineer. This defect was present in the early samples of X99 TF motherboards, and as far as I know, all recent X99 TF, X99 F8 motherboards do not have this defect. But in this comparison, I am using the stock 1NG X99 TF BIOS. So now let's move to the test results. Starting with the Cinebench R20, we can see that 10 core Core i9, which has about the same CPU clock frequency as Ryzen 5 5600X, is losing 20% when it comes to single core performance but able to pull a 20% win when it comes to multi-core performance. Core i5-10500 QSRK loses 27% when using one core and 34% when using all cores. Xeon i5-2678 V3 loses almost 50% when using just one CPU core and 9% when using all CPU cores. Xeon i5-1660 V3 even overclocked to 4.2 GHz is not able to match Ryzen 5 5600. The difference is 35 and 15% when using one and multiple CPU cores. 7 zip compression and decompression. This application is able to use almost as many CPU cores as you have available. Nevertheless, Core i9 QTB1 is only able to beat Ryzen 5 5600 by 10 and 6%. Core i5-10500 QSRK loses 34 and 42 percent. Xeon i5-2678 produces almost the same performance as Ryzen 5 5600. 12 cores and 4 channel memory is giving Xeon a slight advantage here, that's why the performance is very similar. Xeon i5-1660 V3 loses 15 and 14 percent when comparing compression and decompression. Blender benchmark using BMW and classroom scenes. Core i9-10900 QTB1 completed the benchmarks 27 and 21 percent faster when compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. Core i5-10500 with the same six cores compared to Ryzen 5 5600X completed the benchmarks 36 and 46 percent slower. Xeon i5-2678 produces very similar results to Ryzen 5 5600X, weighing 5 percent with the BMW scene and losing 2 percent with the classroom scene. Xeon E5 1660V3 is also very close to Ryzen 5 5600X. Puget Systems DaVinci Resolve Benchmark In general, DaVinci Resolve relies on a powerful graphics card, still the CPU plays a very important role as well. Core i9-10900 loses 5% in 1080p benchmark and wins 3% when using 4K benchmark in comparison to Ryzen 5 5600X. Core i5-10500 QSRK loses 25 and 15 percent. Xeon i5-2678 testing 1080p loses 34 percent, testing 4K loses just 3 percent. Xeon i5-1660 V3 even overclocked to 4.2 GHz at 1080p loses 22 percent and 4K loses 6 percent. Thus, if you are using DaVinci Resolve to edit 4K footage, it's very important to have a strong graphics card. For the CPU, you will be fine with the Xeon E5 2678V3. Handbrake. In this video, I'm encoding 4K video into 1080p and 1440p for YouTube upload. The results are rather surprising. Ryzen 5 5600X is able to beat Core i9-10900 QTB1 by 23 and 22%. It's obvious that Handbrake is very well optimized for the Ryzen CPUs. Otherwise, I don't have any better explanation how a 6-core Ryzen with the same clock frequency can beat a 10-core Core i9 this much. 
Core i5-10500 QSRK loses to Ryzen 5 59 and 56%. Xeon E5 2678V3 loses 22 and 33% to Ryzen 5 5600X and gets very close to Core i9 10900 QTB1. Xeon E5 1660V3 overclocked to 4.2 GHz loses 15 and 17% when compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. Handbrake is a very good example how a modern CPU with a much better IPC can beat older CPUs with many more cores. These were all the workstation tests which I was able to conduct during this limited time. Now let's take a look at some games. Battlefield 5 is my favorite game at the moment, that's why I usually start testing with it. 6-core Ryzen 5 5600X delivers slightly better performance than Core i9-10900 QTB1 when it comes to 1% low, it beats Core i9 by 4%. Average FPS is almost identical between both of the CPUs, 160 and 159 FPS. Core i5-10500 QSRK is able to deliver a very similar average FPS, 152 FPS, which is 4% worse than Ryzen 5 5600, but 1% lows are 17% worse compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. Xeon E5 2678V3 loses 19 and 8% to Ryzen 5. Xeon E5 1660V3 overclocked to 4.2 GHz is also not able to catch up with Ryzen. It loses 12 and 3%. Far Cry New Dawn. This is a very non-optimizer game. Historically, it was favoring Intel CPUs over AMD CPUs. Nevertheless, Ryzen 5 5600X is providing very similar performance to Core i9-10900. Average FPS is 5% better, minimal FPS is 2% worse. Core i5-10500K is losing to Ryzen 5 9 and 15%, Xeon E5-2678 is falling further behind, losing 32% to Ryzen 5 5600X, and overclocked the Xeon E5 1660v3 loses 21% to Ryzen 5 5600X. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a very unpredictable game. It uses multiple CPU cores, but at the same time it relies on IPC, memory latency and memory frequency. Here, Ryzen 5 5600X delivers very similar performance to 10-core Core i9-10900 QTB1. On average, Core i9 wins 6% and loses 2% when it comes to minimal FPS. Core i5-10500 QSRK is surprisingly not that bad, losing only 11 and 1% compared to Ryzen 5. Xeon E5 2678V3 falls further behind. 1% lows are 24% worse compared to Ryzen and averages are 5% worse compared to Ryzen. Xeon E5 1660V3 has identical average FPS Minimal FPS is 13% worse compared to Ryzen 5. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a very well optimized game, it is able to use as many cores, well, okay, almost as many cores as you have. At least it's able to utilize 12 or even 14 CPU cores. That's why here Core i9-10900 should be able to show its potential. Nevertheless, it's still losing to Ryzen 5, 10 and 8% when it comes to minimal and average FPS. Core i5-10500 QSRK loses 29 and 19%. Xeon E5-2678 V3 loses huge 41 and 21% when it comes to minimal and average FPS. Xeon E5-1660 V3 loses 29 and 18%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider demonstrates that even though number of CPU cores is getting to be more and more important for the modern games, it's also important to have a modern CPU with a strong IPC. Here, 6-core Ryzen beats 10-core Core i9 with almost identical frequency. This is truly embarrassing for the Intel CPU. Red Dead Redemption 2. This is an extremely demanding title with phenomenal graphics. That's why the most important component of the system is the graphics card. At 1080p with RTX 2080 Ti using maximum balance at preset, we are GPU bound. That's why all of the CPUs are providing almost identical average FPS, only Xeon E5-2678 falls to 99 FPS, the rest of the CPUs are delivering 100 FPS on average. But we still can compare the CPUs using the minimal FPS. Ryzen 5 5600 loses to Core i9-10900 6%, historically Red Dead Redemption 2 favors Intel CPUs, this result is very good for Ryzen which has 4 less cores than Core i9. 
Core i5-10500 loses 29% to Ryzen 5 when it comes to minimal FPS. Xeon E5-2678 manages to get very close to Ryzen 5, losing only 4%. Xeon E5-1660 V3 loses 18% to Ryzen 5 5600X, even though it's overclocked to 4.2GHz. F1 2019 Even though this game loads very many CPU cores, it still prefers to have very strong IPC and low memory latency to deliver best performance. Here, Ryzen 5 5600X and Core i9-10900 QTB1 are demonstrating almost identical results. Core i9 is just 2% faster. Core i5-10500 QSRK is 12 and 7% slower compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. Xeon E5-2670 shows the worst result, 31 and 25% slower than Ryzen 5. This is a very significant gap for these two CPUs, but we also need to keep in mind that Xeon is much cheaper than the Ryzen CPU. Overclocked to Xeon E5-1660 V3 to 4.2 GHz is still not able to reach Ryzen 5 5600X. It loses 19 and 13% when comparing minimal and average FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is another very demanding title. Here, using 6-core CPUs such as Ryzen 5 and Core i5, looking at the CPU utilization you can see 80% and more. This game receives particularly big hit when I launch MSI Afterburner to do my benchmarks. Without MSI Afterburner the game feels much better and the sudden FPS drops are not present. Nevertheless, let's take a look at the results which I have conducted with MSI Afterburner, even though these results are slightly skewed in favor of the high core count CPUs. Here, Core i9-10900 is just 1% better when it comes to average FPS in comparison with Ryzen 5 5600X but it was 24% better when it comes to minimal FPS. Again, this is very subjective because if I turn off MSI Afterburner, minimal FPS gets much better with Ryzen 5. Core i5-10500 QSRK delivers almost identical performance to Ryzen 5 5600X. Minimal FPS is identical, average FPS is 6% better with the Ryzen CPU. Xeon E5-2678 V3 manages to deliver slightly better minimal FPS compared to Ryzen 5, but again, without MSI Afterburner, Ryzen 5 did not have those sudden FPS drops. This may be in the future there will be some extra optimization. Xeon E5-1660 V3 overclocked to 4.2 GHz is able to slightly beat Ryzen 5 5600X. When it comes to minimal FPS, it was 14% faster, on average, it was just 1% faster. All in all, I think these are very contradicting results. On one side, all the CPUs were tested with MSI Afterburner. On the other side, it's the 6 core CPUs which are receiving the biggest hit from MSI Afterburner. For this video, I did not have any extra time to figure out a better solution to perform FPS measurements. That's why I have used MSI Afterburner. Maybe in the future I will figure out a better way to do comparison, or maybe there will be an update which will remove the sudden FPS drops with MSI Afterburner. But for now we can see that CPUs with more CPU cores are able to take simultaneously more different tasks. To finish the game in benchmarks, let's take a look at 3D Mark. Here I test Time Spy, which is DirectX 12 test, and Fire Strike, which is DirectX 11 test. The TimeSpy benchmark is a very synthetic benchmark which is trying to utilize all possible CPU resources. That's why Core i9-10900, which has 40% more CPU cores, leads Ryzen 5 5600X by 42%. Core i5-10500 loses 19%, Xeon E5-2678 beats Ryzen 5 by 9%, and Xeon E5-1660 V3 overclocked to 4.2 GHz beats Ryzen 5 by 6%. Switching to the older Firestrike benchmark, which uses DirectX 11 API, the picture transforms completely. Ryzen 5 5600X beats Core i9-10900 by 4%, beats Core i5-10500 QSRK by 35%, E5-2678 loses 26%, and overclocked E5-1660 V3 loses 24%. Even though 3D Mark is a very synthetic benchmark which is designed to squeeze every last bit of a CPU performance, it's still nice to see that DirectX 12 API provides these capabilities to utilize all CPU cores to deliver high FPS in games and other video or software. Now let's combine all of those results together and see the whole picture. Here, Ryzen 5 5600X with its 6 cores 
it flows into Core i9-10900, which has 10 cores, just 2% when it comes to workstation benchmarks, and 3% when it comes to gaming. Just think about it, Ryzen 5 5600X with its 6 cores is losing only 2% to Core i9-10900 QTP1 with its 10 cores. Important to mention here is that both of the CPUs have almost identical CPU clock frequency. I think it's time for Intel to gather up their sheet and produce a real CPU upgrade. It's simply not enough to add more and more of those 14 nanometer cores onto your CPU package. At some moment you have to do a better CPU on a better process node with a better IPC. Ryzen 5 5600X is an excellent 6-core CPU which delivers very good productivity performance and very good gaming performance. The only problem I have with this CPU is that it's out of stock everywhere. My local retailers are promising to deliver a new batch of these CPUs in one or two months, which gives me a hope that AMD will be able to ship enough of these CPUs to fulfill the demand. Core i9-10900 QTB1 is also an interesting CPU, but I believe that it's completely overpriced. 280 euros price tag brings it to the same price level as Ryzen 5 5600X. But you might have some compatibility issues with the different Z490 or B460 motherboards. It is also not possible to overclock this CPU, you can only plug it in, maybe reduce some voltage and enjoy whatever you have got from the CPU. If the CPU would cost around 200 to 220 euros, I would say it's a very good purchase. But at 280 euros plus AliExpress shipping plus import charges, I think this CPU is not worth it. Core i5-10500 QSRK is another overpriced CPU. Its current price tag is about 120-125 euros. Even though it's less than half the price of Ryzen 5 5600X, I still believe that it is slightly overpriced. When it comes to productivity benchmarks, it delivers only 63% of Ryzen 5 performance, but for games it delivers 87% of the performance, at least in the games that I have tested. Thus, if you're building a gaming computer and you would like to use a modern platform, this CPU might be a good option for you. Nevertheless, as I said, I still believe that the CPU is overpriced and its price should be around 90-200 euros. On AliExpress you can find a bunch of different B460 and Z490 motherboards to pair with this CPU. One of the cheapest and interesting options is an Onda motherboard on B460 chipset. If you're interested, leave me a comment down below and I will try to purchase this motherboard to do a review and see how it works with these engineering samples. Maybe it will be a very viable alternative to Huanan JX99 TF plus a Xeon E5 2678V3. Speaking of E5 2678V3, this CPU does not stop to amuse me. With a price tag of just 75 euros, it's able to deliver 85% of productivity performance compared to Ryzen 5 5600X and 84% of gaming performance compared to Ryzen 5 5600X. Of course, in some games which are using just one or two CPU cores, such as Far Cry, the difference between these two CPUs will be much bigger, up to 40-50%, but it also depends on which graphics card you are using. People who are buying these Xeon CPUs are trying to save every last penny, and I really doubt that E5 2678V3 will be paired with RTX 2080 Ti. Most likely the best GPU paired with E5 2678V3 will be something like GTX 1080 Ti and RTX 2070 Super. With these GPUs, the difference between Ryzen 5 5600X and Xeon E5 2678V3 will be even smaller. Obviously, if you are using something super powerful such as RTX 3080 or 3090, the gap between 5600X and E5 2678V3 will grow. Xeon E5 1660V3, on the other hand, is a rather pointless CPU. When it comes to productivity, it has identical performance to E5 2678V3. When it comes to gaming, it's just marginally better than E5 2678V3. Still, you need to overclock the CPU to 4.2 GHz. To achieve that, you need a decent motherboard, at least Huanan GX99 TF. You also need a gigantic and expensive CPU cooler and probably a very decent power supply to upkeep the hunger of this CPU. With the price tag of 125 euros, I think it's completely pointless to buy the CPU. 
If you're looking for a gaming machine, for the same money you can buy Core i5 10500Q SRK, which will deliver about the same gaming performance, consume way less power, and does not require expensive cooler. If you're looking to build a workstation, then E5 2678V3 will be a better option. It costs cheaper, it consumes way less electricity, and it can work in a cheap motherboard. Turbo Boost Unlock procedure is also very simple, especially if you use Mi 899 application. All in all, I think Ryzen 5 5600X, Core i9 10900 QTB1, and Core i5 10500 QSRK, all of these three CPUs deserve to have their own video, but I can't afford to spend so much time on each CPU, that's why all three CPUs are combined in this small or not very small video. In the future, I plan to do some extra gaming benchmarks if I will be able to secure myself an RX 6800X when it's released. I also plan to compare Ryzen 5 5600X performance with different DDR4 memory modules using different timings and different XMP profiles. If you're interested, leave me a comment down below and I will prioritize one video over the other one. The last graph I'm going to show you in this video is CPU power consumption. To measure the power consumption, I'm using an external wattmeter, and for the workload, I use Blender Classroom C. While idling, Core i9 and Core i5 consume around 33 to 37 watts. Ryzen 5 and E5 1660 consume around 50 watts. E5 2678 increases the power consumption to 71 watts. This is quite annoying, but if you apply Turbo Boost Unlock procedure and disable CPU C6 state, CPU starts to consume some extra redundant electricity. Even though E5 2678 reduces its clock at idling, it still consumes around 71 watt. Maybe in the future I will be able to do some extra investigations and figure out how to reduce this power consumption, but right now, even with the CPU voltage reduction at 80 mV, when applying Turbo Boost Unlock, E5 2678 at idle consumes 70 w which is roughly twice as much as Core i9-10900K. Under Blender workload, we see that Core i9-10900 consumes 160 w Core i5-10500 consumes 95 w while Ryzen 5 5600 consumes 134 watts. In this test, Ryzen 5 5600, E5 2678 and E5 1660 V3 all produced very comparable results. But to achieve these results, E5 2678 consumes 40% more electricity and E5 1660 V3 overclocked to 4.2 GHz consumes 150% more electricity. This is an enormous difference, and once again it proves my point that E5 1660v3 is a rather pointless CPU. It's also important to mention that I have applied slight undervolting for Core i5 and Core i9. In this particular case, I have used minus 90 mV offset. With the stock configuration, both of the CPUs will be consuming slightly more power. E5 2678 might be very attractive because it has very low price tag of just 75 euros and it also delivers very strong gaming and productivity performance. Still, you need to keep in mind the CPU power consumption, especially at idle conditions. If this is something you cannot bear with, I would recommend you to take a look at the Core i5 and Core i9 engineering samples. And to finish this video, I'm going to tell you a funny story which has happened to me a few days ago. A customer contacted me and asked me to produce the best gaming computer for 600 to 700 euros. After doing some calculations, I have made him a proposal and picked Xeon E5 2678V3 as the CPU. Later on, he called me back and said, You know what, I like everything about your proposal, but I would like to have Intel, not Xeon, in my computer. At that moment, I was completely speechless, I didn't know how to answer. But if you have any idea how to explain to people that Xeon is Intel, then I would like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. For now though, that's all I have for you, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.